Hello, David here with a roundup of some of the most interesting and important tech news from the world of cycling this week. In this video, we are asking why SRAM is putting its best riders on one bike gearing at the Tour de France, what Shimano's new 105 12 speed mechanical group set means with bike prices, plus several new bikes spotted at the Tour, as well as Envy's new Aero handlebar. Let's talk about, let's dive in. Perhaps the biggest story so far is the fact that defending tour winner Jonas Fingergaard has been spotted riding a bike with a SRAM Red 1x group set in the very hilly opening stages of this year's race. He's clearly been watching my 1x vs 2x videos, hasn't he? Probably not. If you missed it though, I'll put a link to it down below. Now, this did surprise me given just how hilly the start of this year's race has been and the fact just the star riders on a Jumbo Visma squad, Jonas, and Wout van Aert are making a switch from 2x to 1x. It seems a bit risky, a bit of a gamble, especially given some of the high profile drop chains with 1x bikes recently. But to minimize this, his Cervelo S5 was fitted with a brand new Wolf 2 chain guard. And the gearing in question appears to be a rather massive 50 tooth chairing and a 1036 cassette, a new lightweight version of the cassette to offset the weight the biggest sprockets on this item. So why is he going one by? Well, there's a weight advantage for a start, no front mech and one left chainring can save a good few hundred grams. And that appears to be driven by desire getting riding the S5 aero bike over the R5 lightweight bike for the aero gains, even on such a hilly start to the race. There is a small possible aero advantage as well, but I think weight is probably the main focus behind a switch from two by to one by. There's also the potential efficiency benefit of always being in the big ring and using bigger cassette sprockets as well. Such a setup can provide lower chain tension and reduced chain link rotation, according to testing by Friction Facts, I'll put a link down below, and can be worth a decent number of watts. Of course, this is not accounting for lateral chain alignment or cross chaining, but assuming he set the gears up so he can maintain a straight chain line when it really matters, it might not be an issue. It's well known, of course, that cross chaining can cost you several watts, and some people think it's worse than it actually is. But even with a two by setup, there is an element of cross chaining happening. And the top riders will cross chain in some situations and not worry about the potential lost watts. When you're cresting a climb, it can be preferable to cross chain rather than risk changing to a small ring at the front. And it's here at the top of the climb where attacks often go. So in this situation, one bike could offer an advantage, not having to worry about being the big ring or small ring, just change it up as you need. I'd love to be a fly on the wall behind a decision for just the two star riders on a team to go to one bike. It does seem a bit risky testing it on just star riders, but maybe the team think it's a bigger benefit to their racing aspirations rather than the entire squad. Now, as much as we all might think it's a SRAM marketing campaign in overdrive, I'm sure a team and the riders wouldn't go with it unless they felt they could really benefit. So an interesting one, be fascinating to see how the team plays out with one by throughout the three week race. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. The Tour de France is and always will be a hotbed for brand new unlaunched bikes. This year, BMC, Ridley and Factor appear to have new bikes in the pipeline for launch very soon. No sighting of an expected new specialized Tarmac SL8 or even a new Venge though, but not yet anyway. This new factor looks really interesting. A weight clearly appears to be a key focus with some super skinny tubes and a seat mask like what Trek use. Bike radar even weighed it at 6.9 kilograms with pedals, which is pretty amazing. And that makes it lighter than the Carnaga V4 RS I reviewed at the weekend. BMC appears to have a brand new Time Machine aero bike in the works as well. It launched the original Time Machine at the 2013 Tour de France. I was there at the launch. My goodness, that was a long time ago. And the current model, it's fair to say, hasn't been very popular, either in bike shops or with the pros. You've never seen a team using it at all. So it's definitely due an update. The Team Machine is personally an amazing bike, but it's not aero. And demand from pro racers for lightweight aero bikes and lightweight appears to be the focus of the new version how light is anybody's guess but you're hoping for a bike that's around seven kilos with all the aero benefits it appears to offer 
And the Belgian brand Ridley also appears to have a new aero lightweight bike. Is it a helium replacement or a brand new model? I've no idea yet. This new Ridley is also one of the few road bikes adopting SRAM's universal derailleur hanger too. So a bit of a sign of a new trend happening there. Can't wait to see more details on this Ridley. I've always liked Ridley bikes, the Helium, the old Noah. It'd be great to see them kind of getting back to the position they used to be in many years ago. Aside from new bikes, there is loads of new kit on display as well. And of particular interest is a brand new MV One Piece Aero handlebar on just Tade Pagacha's bike. Now, the team swapped from the stock Carnago One Piece handlebar to a two piece Aero setup from MV along with MV wheels this season, but the US company has now developed its first ever one piece aero handlebar. Looks very similar to their two piece setup in terms of profile, just remove that uh, connection between the stem and the handlebar, and clearly developed in line with Tyler Pagacha and what his needs and requirements are. And that should be launching hopefully sometime this year. Can't imagine how expensive it would be. I'll definitely try and get one in for review. Also of interest on Tade Pagacha's bike and the team bikes, of course, are clear weight saving measures. We have these amazing looking, uber expensive carbon TI disc brake rotors. They've been around for a few years now, but this is the first time I've seen a professional team using them. So they combine carbon fiber and titanium to get the weight benefits of their materials and they look pretty funky as well. I don't know how the actual braking performance compares to the stock Shimano Durace items, but maybe I'll try and get some in for review and find out how to compare to a standard setup. And now for something you definitely won't see in the professional peloton at the Tour of France, but spotted for the first time at a recent Eurobike show, Shimano's brand new 105 12 speed mechanical group set has broken cover. So no official word, no official launch from Shimano, but a bike was displayed at a recent Eurobike show in Germany with the new group set. Whether this was a planned leak or whether it was a bit of an accident, nobody knows. It's not really in Shimano's kind of history to do a planned leak like this, more what you expect SRAM to do. So it does appear that somebody dropped the ball, but it's given us a first glimpse of Shimano's new group set. And permit me to say, I told you so. Because when Shimano unveiled their new 105 DI2 group set, they never actually said or confirmed that the mechanical version would be dropped. But loads of people leapt at conclusion anyway and talked about the demise of mechanical 105. But here we are clearly with a new 12 speed mechanical group set coming when, nobody knows, but the group set on a bike looks pretty finished, it has to be said. So hopefully it'll launch later this year. But the big question we all want an answer to is how much would it cost? Well, I've no idea, but I guess at about £1,000 for the group set on its own, we'll put it in line with SRAM's new Apex 12 speed mechanical group set. And now a big question we want an answer to is whether there will be a rim brake version. The bike on display had disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes, and there's been no sighting or mention of a rim brake version but I'm going out on the limb and saying it will be a disc brake only group set and Tiagra will be the cheapest, most affordable rim brake group set. And I think that's where that market, because we expect to see one of five mechanical on bikes costing 3,000 pounds and more. So not cheap, but not uber expensive. And I think those sort of bikes, three, four, 5,000 pounds and the people buying those bikes want and expect disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes. So I expect it to be a disc brake group set. Of course, personally, I'd love to see a rim brake version because I still think it's a good place for rim brakes, but it's clear the bike industry and the market is going down the route of disc brakes only. And this new group set does raise an interesting question in the battle of the group set manufacturers. Now SRAM has been super aggressive in bringing its wireless tech to lower prices. We had Apex recently, just a few weeks ago, linked that video down below. So SRAM is now offering four electronic group sets. And Apex is of course a one by 12 group set focused at gravel adventure bikes and clearly focused at riders who are interested in racing, not trying to emulate the pros and want a wide range group set for the riding aspirations they have. And compared to this, Shimano is still stuck in the racing world 
developing products for the pros and those amateurs want to emulate the pros and this clearly shows in 105. It's another two by group set with a typical range of gearing options. Even though there are rumors we might get a brand new 1136 cassette, it's still aimed at people want to race, do sporties at a competitive pace. So not as accessible, wide ranging as the Apex Group set at SRAM launched a few weeks ago. And it will be interesting to see what bike prices are like when Apex 12 speed mechanical and 105 12 speed mechanical are actually available as Spectrum bikes. Will it be the same prices? And we've got two very different group sets, two by 12 and one by 12, one for gravel adventure bikes, but you could use it on a road bike, of course, and one aimed at the more traditional road rider. Which will win out? Well, time will tell, and you guys will decide which is the, uh, the group set that will win out in a group set battle. And that concludes this week's tech roundup. If you've seen any cool new products or bikes being used at the Tour de France or other rides and races, feel free to put a comment down below. But that's all today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all again very soon.